So you're thinking about getting into bees and you can't decide between all of the different types of choices of hives that are available. Whether you go with your more traditional hives, your scientific hives, or hives with a heap of extra features and benefits, most of them have the same function. It's just the way they do it. Let's go and do a deep dive into hives today with Andrew from Australian Bee Supplies. <laughs> now, just a quick disclaimer before we start this series. If you're thinking about buying a beehive, check with your local authorities which ones comply with the regulations for your area. Having got that out of the way, Andrew, pretty traditional, it sure is. This is a Kenyan top hive. Um, it is extremely oh, old and it has special frames like this which the bees draw uh, naturally. So it's a foundationless frame. So bees build their own honeycomb down from that single piece of timber? Correct. They'll make it into a triangle and then they either fill it with honey and nectar or brood depending what the requirements are. And it is a very, very gentle and effective way of, of doing it. It also has a little window so you can have a little bit of a look, see what the girls are up to. You can see that. Isn't that honey. cute? It you is can very have a look cute. At your girls. The girls will be running around and working very, very hard, um, and it works lovely. And you can also put separators into this type of hive and you can have several colonies in the one hive? Correct. You've it's just got, got to be careful to keep them separated. Absolutely. There's an entrance here and there's an entrance at the other, other side so you can run two or even three colonies if you wanted to. You have to have a separator board so the pheromones from one queen doesn't spread to the other one. Um, otherwise they will kill one of the queens and it will be uh, Game of Thrones, uh, Red Wedding. Now we're still down at the traditional end here but we've made vast improvements with the Langstroth hive that we have here and it makes the extraction of honey and other valuable products from the bees really easy doesn't it Andrew? Absolutely so in a Langstroth hive you have frames which are a full frame so effectively a, a, a rectangle and we normally will put in beeswax foundations so the girls can actually draw it out and because of the specific size of the frame which is called bee space and um, they will make the honey absolutely straight down. So the gap between the frames makes this type of hive much cleaner and tidier and easier to manage and the frames because they've got the wax starter they get your honey production up and going a lot quicker and make them more efficient. Absolutely much quicker and you also can get propolis out of that pollen, uh, beeswax and obviously honey. Now you can also put an extra box on the top of these and actually put in a mesh frame that separates the queen so that you only collect your honey from the top, is that correct? Absolutely. We normally run what's called two brood boxes, so those boxes are for the queen, she makes her babies and bees in there. Then we'll place a queen excluder which stops her climbing up into the third box which is called the honey super. And then the, the worker bees will make honey in that honey super so there is no babies in there. And then we can collect and harvest it. So some for you. Lots for the colony, everyone's happy. We're all happy. Now th it makes sense then that this is the type of hive that most apiarists will be using. Correct. It's simple but also highly technically reliable. And, and most popular of all. Next up Andrew, we're starting to get into the technological side of things. This is the Flow Hive, they've been around for a little while now. Yes, Flow Hive just celebrated their ninth anniversary, so they've been on the market established. Now these are pretty popular with your do-it-yourselfers and your small backyarders and that's because you don't actually have to buy more equipment to have one. Absolutely. The biggest advantage of the flow hive is the flow frames. So the flow frames allow honey uh, as self-extraction, so you don't need an extractor or, or a spinner um, and you can open them up and, and put them directly into jars. So less gear to store away and extraction's super easy for the small hobbyist, but obviously the extra cost and complication makes extractors still viable for people who want large amounts of hives. Yeah, extractors, extractors will always be around and, and they're a, a much, much more uh, quicker option and easier to use as well, in, especially in larger quantities of hives. Now in some cases the marketing for flow hives has sort of shot them in the foot a bit because people think that you don't have to maintain these but you do have to maintain these hives don't you? Yeah sometimes people have this assumption that you just throw bees in and get honey well that's not exactly true you still have the same amount of maintenance uh, in, a, in a flow hive that you do in a traditional hive you still have to do uh, inspections make sure that the, the bees are healthy the queen is healthy there's enough pollen and honey for the colony um, so it's not just throw them in and here we go it, you still need to do just as much work as you do in a traditional hive. Now, you actually run courses here in location in Victoria, so if people are in Victoria and they want to do a bee 
keeping course. You can get them up and going not only with the Flow Hive but also with all the information they need to actually use this hive effectively. Certainly do. We have in-house courses every four to six weeks. We also have beehives uh, at the warehouse as well so the course is quite intensive and you do a full hive inspection and opening and we find queens and so everything gets done in-house and we open up our beehives at the, at the back of the warehouse um, so full inspections are covered and it's a very intensive course uh, a lot of information and that will get you up and running probably for your first three years without any problem whatsoever. And there's a great online course available from Hawaii too, we put a link to that in the description so if you've done an in-house course and you want to catch up on a few things there is also that online option as well. Highly recommended, highly recommended. So Andrew it's around the back of the flow hive that all of the magical differences are that makes extraction of the honey so easy isn't it? It certainly is. Starting from the top, if we take the top off there's actually a natty little feeding hole in this top cover plate, isn't there, that allows you to put a syrup jar on top of the hive during winter for feeding? Yep, if the conditions aren't great, we feed our bees with a sugar syrup combination and you can pop that out, put a jar on top and the girls will come and extract it, extract it from underneath and take it into where it's needed with the brood. So once again, low disturbance. There's no need to move the hive or disturb it in any way and you can feed the hive without having to touch the bees. Absolutely. Now, moving towards extraction, these are the frames. They're, they're quite a complex frame here and they're actually angled. So they actually angle back towards the front of the hive and that allows flow of honey to occur, doesn't it? Correct. So when we're harvesting it at the back, because it's on an angle, it will flow much easier. Well, let's go through the process for harvesting. There's a couple of covers here that you need to remove. Yep. There's one at the top. So this is the cover which will allow you to crack open the frames. And below is where the honey comes out of. So we have a couple of plugs, a small one here. So there's a plug at the bottom of each of the frames mm -hmm. and there's a plug at the top of each of the frames. Like that, yep. So that we don't get any airlocks in there. Mm -hmm. And then we get a little tube like this, which sits inside here. And that's simply to allow the honey to flow out of the bottom hole in the Absolutely. frame. Absolutely. Now the top hole has a use as well. Yeah, this is the magical flow key and you normally pop it in and you turn it. We usually do it about an inch at a time um, because it will be waxed and properized so, so it makes it much easier to do it a little bit at a time. And once that is all cracked open, um, the frames separate and the honey starts flowing outside uh, with the tube. So you're literally shearing the honeycomb inside the frame so that the honey flows out. Uh, it's going to take a little while for all of that honey to flow out of the frame? Yeah, it depends on what sort of nectar and, and what temperature it is, but it can be anywhere from half an hour to a couple of hours, two to three hours even, depending on what sort of uh, species they've, they've brought in there. Now, do I have to take these frames out once I've finished harvesting and clean them or do any other work with them, or are they right just to stay in place? Now, that's the beauty of the, of the girls and the bees. All you have to do is close it up again, so do the opposite, yep. and put in your little plug in here and another one at the bottom and the bees will start working on it again and they'll fix up all the broken uh, beeswax and start filling it up with nectar. So it's really easy to harvest your honey, you can do it in the field, in location, you don't have to pull anything apart, it's very little disturbance and you're going to get good extraction rates out of these frames just like you would with a standard beehive. Yep, absolutely. Much easier and much quicker to, to extract. Um, you have to be aware that sometimes if the girls uh, can smell the honey around the back, they, they will come and, and try to, to steal it back. Um, so uh, when you put it into a bucket, it's usually best to, to cover it or, or have a tube which runs into it. Um, otherwise, you'll have a jar with honey and bees in it. And you don't want that. We don't want that. Now next up we're starting to get really technical looking, aren't we Andrew? This is the Thermo Hive. Correct. And it's basically a Langstroth with a few extra features. Absolutely. One of the biggest advantages of the Thermo Hive, it has 40 mil uh, ins insulation. So it maintains um, management of heat for the bees much better. So the sides of it are basically like cool room panels. So it stops heat stress in the hive. Mm -hmm. And in turn, that means that the girls don't have to work as hard to maintain the, that heat management, uh, which in turn means that you can actually have higher yield productions. So less stress on the bees, higher yield, and there's a couple of other features, and there's one under the lid, isn't there? Certainly is. Once we open it up, so you can see how thick that is, and that's got the a polyurethane insulation in it. That's it's what, basically what like it. an esky that you put your lunch in, isn't it? Exactly, exactly like that. And this is what's called a wet-dry feeder. So it sits on top of the 
on top of the box like that mm -hmm. and you can pour either liquid syrup into it if it's necessary to get the girls through winter or you can just swap this over to the other side and you can put either uh, dry pollen or bee food in there and you can close it up and it means you don't have to suit up you can just refill it at any point in time don't disturb your bees really safe to feed the bees absolutely really safe for you as well now inside this we've got the same frames that we're used to with the langstroth haven't we correct so they are literally identical this one's a 10 frame one these are also plastic frames, but you can have foundation frames um, or, or pure plastic. Um, and this is just another style of feeder that we have. So there's different types of feeders you can use for bees um, because everyone will at some point in time need to feed their bees. Now we're not going to get into it in a great deal of detail, but there are some organic certification systems that allow plastic hives, others that don't mention it, and others that forbid it and the, the organic industry, for want of a better word, is fraught with that sort of thing anyway, isn't it? So if you are an organic producer, just make sure that under your certification you're allowed to use a plastic hive. But if you are, they're food grade plastic, they take care of your bees and increase your yield. Absolutely, they don't leach any chemicals, they are as good as any other food grade uh, plastic that we use every day. And there's a pollen collector below, isn't there? There certainly is. Um, so you can actually collect, um, I've been managing to collect up to about a kilo of pollen per week in, in, in good conditions. As you can see, I've got another base set up uh, for the thermo hive, and this has a very nifty pollen collector in it. Um, the bees will go through the entrance here, and they will climb into the beehive. They will walk under here, and they will climb up through the pollen collector, and the pollen will fall down into the tray. So the pollen will sit on the tray, and we can collect it uh, later. And the advantage of this pollen collector is it's slightly bigger holes than a traditional one, so it doesn't fully strip the, the bees of pollen, which means they can actually take um, that, that, that protein back up to, to the frames. So if you're after a Langstroth style hive, and you're prepared to go out and get your spinners and your extractors and all of that sort of thing, then this is really worth having a look at. This is the next step up, isn't it, in bee management? Absolutely outstanding. These are outstanding uh, hives themselves. All right, Andrew, next up, we've flipped everything horizontal for people with mobility issues. This is fantastic. You've got some hives here that are on their side on a frame. Absolutely. These are called long langs or long langstroth hives and they are effectively, rather than being vertical, the frames go horizontal. So you can have up to 28 frames in one big box and the biggest advantage is you can lift those frames quite easily. So if you are elderly or, or have mobility issues, um, you can still work your hives without a problem. Well, let's open up this one on the right and see how it works and see how it's different to a normal set of frames. And then let's have a look at this one over here, which I think is my personal favourite. Mm -hmm. This is a long lang hybrid. All right, Andrew, we've come around the back. The entrance for the bees, of course, is on the other side of the hive there. And when we open it up, things have flipped around slightly, haven't they? A little bit, a little bit. So here in this long lang straw, we've got 28 frames. So it's practically like a three box hive in itself. We also have a queen excluder, which is a vertical one, which stops the queen going into your honey production area. And if you want to run two colonies, you can put in a divider board and you can actually have two different colonies. Uh, we also have a fully vented base. So if it gets too hot, we can open it up or close it up. And this is really good for summer and in winter we close them up. So Andrew, all we've got to get our head around with this particular option is that we're putting the boxes side by side rather than stacking them up on top of each other, but it works exactly the same as a normal Langstroth hive. Yes, it's pretty much a three box beehive. Uh, it's just much easier to access, it's much easier to work because it's at a very, very good uh, height. And I suppose the other advantage of working with normal frames, with Langstroth frames, is that you can extract wax and various other products from it as well as just the honey, whereas you can't with a flow hive, can you? Correct. We can make beeswax, we can get propolis, we get honey. Um, in flow frames we can only get honey because uh, the, they are covered in wax and that wax just cracks. In traditional frames we cut off the, the cappings and we can render that and make that into uh, beeswax blocks. So Andrew, I reckon we've left the best till last. Now you designed this. Yes we did. That's fantastic mate. So it's a 
full mobility beehive and it's combining the features and advantages of the flow hive with the features and advantages of a Langstroth as well as all of your viewing panels and everything to allow you to enjoy your bees. Yes, they do. Well, let's open up the lid and take us for a tour, mate. We've got lids at the top, which I've vented as well. Three of those. On this side, we've got the flow frames. As such, we've got normal uh, frames for honey and, and brood. This is what our honey will be looking like. We also have a queen excluder, so that stops them laying eggs inside the flow frames. And you can even put an extra colony in there, so you can put a divider board and have two colonies running. At the front here, or this is the back actually, we have our extraction wi window where we can harvest our flow frames down there. And then of course we've got another viewing window so we can admire our pretty little ladies. And here is where the bees go in. So they go in at the, at the front and then we work the beehive at the back so we don't disturb the bees and they can continue on the flight paths. And that's what the hybrid flow long length looks like. Well, Andrew, you've sold me, mate. Sign me up. I couldn't wait to get my hands on one of these. You've got the ease and convenience of harvesting from your flow hive frames. You've got your ability to collect wax and do other things with the frames on the left-hand side there. And the bees are kept away from you while you're working the hive. And you've got plenty of viewing spots. It's fantastic. It's got all the features. Good fun. I'll bring it down to your farm shortly. Fantastic, mate. In the meantime, if you like content like this, support the channel by hitting the subscribe button and you'll make sure that you get plenty of great ideas for your little patch of paradise. Andrew, great to be with you Thank as you. always, mate. And if you need anything to do with bees in Australia, get onto Australian Bee Supplies. Andrew will help you out. See you guys.